Wait, buildings can talk? Well, they may not talk in the way you and I think of it. They can't actually speak directly to you, but you know how other things that can't talk can still communicate with you, right? Let's say that your dog wants to go for a walk. You understand what he's asking. Or your plant is saying, please water me. Plants can't speak, but again, you get the message. Well, it's kind of the same thing with buildings. They have their own languages, and there's more than one language, just like people have more than one language. One of the languages that buildings speak comes from a long time ago when the ancient Greeks lived, around 2,500 years ago. The Greeks were wonderful architects, and the name of the building language that they invented is called the classical language of architecture. Architecture is just the word for the design of a building or a house. The Greeks came up with rules to make sure that their buildings were safe and strong, and many people believe that these rules also made the buildings beautiful. So this language that the Greeks invented comes from the way they made their basic buildings. They started with wood, they probably started with tree trunks for posts, they'd clean them up, take the branches off, and use another piece of wood to go across the tops of the posts. Once they did that, they could put a roof on the wood frame they had just made. This is called a post and beam system. The post is the one that stands up straight and the beam is the one that lays down across the posts. Over time, the Greeks started making their buildings out of stone, but they cut the stone to look like their wood buildings. The different parts of the stone kind of represented the different wood pieces. Now, stone buildings last longer than wood. If you go to Greece today, you can still see some of these actual buildings or parts of them from over 2,000 years ago. It's amazing that something real people made that long ago is still here. You can still see and touch it. This makes it a little more real when you're trying to understand something that happened so long ago. Languages have words and sentences, and one important word in the classical language of architecture is the word column. The name column is another word for the post we just talked about. The ancient Greeks came up with three different kinds of columns. Later on, in a time called the Renaissance, two more were added. So that's five altogether. All of the columns have to be strong because they all hold up roofs, but just like people, they each have a different personality. Some are shorter and simple. Some were simple, but they were built super tall. Look at the size of the people in each of these pictures compared to the size of the columns. That's how you can tell how big the column really is. Some are taller and thinner than others, and some had fancier hats on top. The hats are called capitals, and here the word capital means the part at the top of the column. The capital on this one is a simple round circle, and the same is true for this one. This one has a curly piece on every corner, and this one's getting fancier. It has carved leaves on it. The pattern of the leaf is from real life. Here's a picture of a real leaf like the one that they copied when they were carving the stone. The leaves are from acanthus plants. Those are plants which grow in Greece. This one is the fanciest of all. And it's a combination of the two just before it. One building in Greece that you can still visit today is a temple where the columns are ladies. The ladies are holding the roof up on their head. Nice work, ladies. You might think from looking at these pictures and the way we use columns today that they're always white. But in fact, the, when the Greeks built their temples and theaters and gymnasia, they painted, painted everything in bright colors. On the right, where the man is on the horse, a museum has recreated the colors as we think they might have looked. Now, the columns all have their own names, and you don't have to remember them, but I'll say them so you can hear how they sound. The first two with the simple round capitals are called the Tuscan and the Doric. The one with the curly corners is the Ionic, and the two with the carved leaves on them are called the Corinthian, and 
the composite. And the next time you go into a building that has columns like this, you might look up. You'll probably have to crane your neck to look up to see the tops. You might say to yourself, hey, I remember that one. That's the one I like the best. Also, just like people, they're kind of a family, and they have a family name called the Five Orders. So you know how you can make different sentences using the same words in a different arrangement? Well, you can also make different things with columns. Even though you're using the same columns, you just arrange them differently. To start, you need at least two columns to hold anything up, and one combination of columns might make an entry like this to a house. Another combination of columns could make someone's front porch. Four columns placed in a square can make an outdoor room. It still feels like a room, even without the walls. Or you might put pairs of columns marching along a walkway. In this case, it's an outdoor garden walkway that plants can grow on. You might use columns to make a covered walkway attached to a building that, if it's raining, people could go from one store to the next without getting wet. In this picture, columns are holding up a roof over a sidewalk cafe. It looks like a great place to get a bite to eat. When you put lots of columns together in a group, how close or far apart you space them can feel kind of like a musical rhythm. You get a different feeling depending on how they're spaced. If columns are far apart, you'll feel like you can walk between them, which is good at somebody's front door. But if the walkway's up off of the ground and you walk through them, you might fall. In that case, if you put the columns close together, they might say to you, stay here on this side. When they're close together, it might feel harder to pass through them, and the message they're sending is to walk alongside, but don't go through. In this picture, the columns are far apart, and they feel nice and airy, but there's a continuous low base between them that reminds you to stay walking inside the curve. Otherwise, you'd stub your toe and be reminded. In this picture, the outdoor walkway is high up on a building, so just to be safe, a railing is built together with the columns. Columns put close together can feel like the walls of a room, but you still feel like you're outside. Remember, it only takes four columns to make you feel like you're in a room, even with no walls. So this is my house, my front porch, my door, and the columns are spaced far enough apart that people could easily walk through them when they come to visit me. It's kind of inviting. It's like saying, come on in. The columns are a little taller than I am, but they're not huge. And they don't have to be too big or strong because they're only holding up the roof of my porch. Columns at the front door of this library are bigger and taller. And they still say, come on in. But since they're so much bigger and a little bit fancier than the columns on my front porch, they're saying this is different than someone's private house. Once your mom or dad tells you that this is a library, you understand that this is a public building. Everyone can come here. This building is a library, too. The columns are even bigger and a lot taller than the first library. There are lots of steps leading up to the door, and all of this tells you that this building is important. In this case, it's important because you can take books out of here. It's kind of like a house of learning. The other reason that the columns are big and tall is because even though they're holding up a porch, it's much bigger than the porch on my house. So one language that buildings can speak is the classical language of architecture. It started way back with the ancient Greeks. One of the important words in that language is column. All the columns wear different hats called capitals. And the family of five columns that the Greeks invented is called the five orders. Now you've learned your first few words of a new language.